Arts Building. So we've done, uh, we have the, the instruction side, the culinary arts side, which we have both high school and college classes that we teach. And it's roughly about 120 students a day go through the facility. And that'd be maybe a third of it. But we use also the same building for, we have a restaurant that's open to the public. And uh, it's open Tuesday through uh, Friday, 8 to, tw uh, to 2 o'clock every day. And they serve a great breakfast, great lunch. It's a full menu. Uh, the other parts of the facility we use for um, preparing meals for the community as well. We're part of the community, we, we like to be part of the community. And the community helped build the facility, so we want them to be part of it. So we do Meals on Wheels. We do uh, also meals for uh, parochial schools in the area. We do child care. We do uh, other school districts that are in the area. We do theirs. Uh, we also make food for other school districts, just portions of it, like our pizza. We make the our special pizza, and that uh, and that goes out to other schools as well, to school districts. And they buy just that from us. But yeah, so we just, wherever we can find a niche, we say, yeah, we can do it. Our program was started 10 years ago, and it has been very successful over those 10 years. Is what has made the program very successful is the fact that we treat it like a real restaurant. The whole goal here is to get the students to be able to work for an individual like myself, and we represent the industry. The industry has requirements based on production, skills, cooking quality, and multitasking abilities. And with these abilities, it's going to allow the student to be very hireable. Um, I like taking this class because I learn a lot of measurements, how to cook, and also because I'm hoping that I can get hired as a cook at a restaurant or somewhere. I'd like to uh, just tell you a few of the things that I really like about this Culinary Academy. The idea that that a young man can come here who has no idea what food service is all about and within a short time he'll get a feel for not only what food service entails but he'll come out of here with a little bit of expertise as well so they'll understand how to work on breakfast cookery, they'll understand how to work with meats, how to do plate presentations they'll also get a good feel for how a restaurant actually runs, they'll do some costing and again the, the main purpose is when they get done with this with their time here with us they'll have a good feel for if they want to continue on, if they want to make this a life career, or is this something that they could just use the rest of their life? I think that's the two points to it is, one, they could use this as a career, but the other point is, for me, I look around at, at youth of today and I see a lot of them who really unfortunately have no clue of what cooking is all about. When I first came here, it was just a very to me, repetitive menu, and it was all pre-prepared items. I thought, no, I'm going to go back to Mom's Home Cooking. And so then we changed everything, went back to Mom's Home Cooking, and uh, well, within a couple months, the superintendent, or assistant superintendent, calls me in his office and says, Rod, we're having problems with the quality of your food here. I'm having complaints. I says, how can that be? I'm teaching sanitation. I'm, I'm teaching all these different techniques and, and things they need to cook better and, and things. We're making all these foods from scratch. We're making, uh, you know, homemade like casseroles and all this kind of great stuff and he goes they don't want that and then I started to realize that I have to do two sides of it I have to find what the kids want and then I have to try and make it healthy and so we started looking at okay what are the things that, and we went through years of, of modifying and changing things but the two biggest things that kids like are pizza and, I, and the other thing that we realized they do tons of stuff with is the ranch dressing. And so the pizza, we went ahead and formulated, did our own formulation, we make our own pizzas, and uh, the pizza now is made with garbanzo bean flour and chia seed gel. And so it's, uh, and then the rest of it's pretty much, although we make our own sauce and stuff like that on top of it, uh, it's pretty, pretty generic. I mean, it's, it's the standard, that part would be the standard, but we're able to make a pizza that's it's extremely healthy, uh, yeah, just extremely healthy. Tons of nutrients that you wouldn't get in any other pizza. Then we did the same thing with our ranch dressing. 
they put it on everything. They don't put it on vegetables only. They put it on pizza. They put it on croutons. They put it on everything. And so we said, okay, let's make that healthier. And so we took the things that they like to eat, and then we, we formulated it. And the, the uh, dressing is made out of uh, yogurt, um, chia seed gel, and uh, then another corn, uh, corn fiber. They have just looked at other things in their diets. Whatever we can make, like a cinnamon roll, that's something they love. Okay, how can we make a cinnamon roll that actually meets the guidelines that USDA has given us? And we just reformulated recipes and we find ways to make it work. So we've actually been able to find the foods that they're wanting to eat, we've been able to find ways to make them and even purchase them that fit the guidelines. I want them to have whole foods and that's one of my other goals too is I want them to start eating more whole foods and, uh, and things that are less processed. So I feel if I process them myself, I can control that a little bit more. I want to get local produce, of course, but um, it has to be pretty close to the cost I'm currently paying. So it's got to be close to a wholesale price. And I said, you don't always have to beat it. I said, but if you can come close to it, that's, that's what I need. And so pretty much I'll tell them this is the prices that currently I'm paying wholesale. If you can, if you can come close to it, I'm a happy man. And for the most part, I'm able to get, of the local crops, I'm always able to get what I need mm -hmm. from, uh, not all my needs met, but I can pretty much yeah. get good sources for most of that. When we can incorporate the things from our own uh, gardens, that's perfect. But sometimes you can't. Yeah. But still, the students, if they, if they can pick the vegetable, mm -hmm. they're more likely to eat it. If it's forced upon them, they're more likely to throw it away. Yeah. And, uh, so it's just a, and again, if you can have a buy-in. And that's why I said, I really would like more emphasis to be put on education in the classroom, or even education in the cafeteria, I mean, that would be great too. Yeah. It's just hard to, to afford that extra person to do that, but I think that's what's really needed. We need to, to have that tie-in.